Hello everyone, welcome to Game Changer webinar day two for performance management and this is Rizwan Mania. I hope you all are well. So guys, uh, before I move towards the session, a quick confirmation. Uh, is everyone okay? And uh, is my voice clear to all of you? Can you see the screen, video, voice? And we confirm in the chat box is everything okay? <coughs> Great. Thank you very much for your confirmation in the chat box. So, guys, here we are with day two. I hope day one went good for you people and you really did learn a lot of things uh, when it comes to day one. So, I hope that day one uh, proved good for all of you. So, today uh, we'll be focusing on different things we'll be focusing on different areas where you can definitely uh, learn new techniques and new tips and tricks uh, so let's start the session officially now this is my number uh, the reason for sharing is that uh, those who want to be part of the general pm community you can contact me at this number and i'll be happy to share the group links with you people okay uh, those who are already part of the PM global community, the free groups I'm talking about, you don't need to. But if you're not part of that, for sure, you can send me the message and I'll share the group link with you people. Okay. So let me show you the number again. If you were not able to copy it, so please kindly note down it and send me the message if you want to be part of that group. Now, <clears throat> How to remain connected during the webinar? Uh, it's a very simple thing. There is a, there is there's a chat box available to you, uh, and you can uh, message there uh, for any questions, for any query you have, and even if I ask you something, you can respond in that comment section. Webinar day wise plan is given to you. <laughs> we uh, were done with day one yesterday, where we did cover. Uh, section C and Section B uh, uh, practice questions with the revision. Today it's uh, Section C and Section A is what we'll be focusing today uh, in order to complete all the paper areas. Uh, day 3 <coughs> is grand revision. I've already mentioned yesterday this is part of the paid batch. So those who are interested in this grand revision session, you have to enroll yourself uh, in the revision match, which we are starting from 9th of February. Uh, this revision match, uh, just to give you a quick uh, input again, this revision batch includes number one, important areas, uh, pre-recorded content with past paper practice questions of those important areas. Number two, it includes two uh, mocks uh, with debriefs of those mock and script marking facility for the mock as well and third it includes the grand revision uh, which is part of the paid match so those who are interested uh, in this complete package including all these three things can contact our support team at 923241387 and our support team will be happy to help you in this regard so I hope this is clear to all of you uh, about day wise plan. Now let's uh, look at the topics that we are covering in the today's webinar. So we will be starting with uh, financial, non-financial performance area. Financial, non-financial area remains a very popular one uh, in performance measurement. And <clears throat> yes, from examination perspective, always remains a hot favorite area for the examiner. So uh, financial non-financial is what we are covering today. Uh, and in that, we will be focusing on one of the models by the name of building block model. And then we will be looking at transfer pricing. Uh, one area, again, which people feel they are not very good at or where examiner can play a lot of tricks with you people. And then we'll be looking at pricing area. And at last, we'll be looking at examiner report OTs, uh, which examiner has mentioned this time to be the one that people were not very comfortable at an exam 
uh, uh, examination. So I'll try my best to cover all these four uh, agendas for today. Let's see how time proceeds. Uh, but let's now begin with the area of financial, non-financial. Uh, just to give you a basic quick idea, uh, it is very important for a business to uh, ensure that they have good critical success factors in place. And these are known as CSFs, critical success factors, uh, are the areas where a business should win. Uh, so these CSFs actually, you know, are important for a business uh, success. If a business wants to achieve its mission, if a business wants to achieve its vision, so it is very important that the business should focus on critical success factors and the achievement of those CSFs. Uh, it is very important to actually check your performance, uh, gauge your performance, whether you are on track to achieve these CSFs. So for that, you need to have KPIs by the name of key performance indicators. These KPIs basically uh, uh, are those that will measure, that will check whether CSFs are being achieved or not. So I always give a very good example here to differentiate between what CSF and what KPI is. Uh, so for example, if you uh, are <coughs> suffering from high fever, so uh, what you do, you want to check how much temperature you are suffering with right now. So what you do, you take out a thermometer, right? So that thermometer basically is an equipment, I would say, that you use to measure uh, your temperature, how much fever you are uh, you are having right now. So that thermometer actually measures the temperature of your body and indicates you how much uh, fever you are uh, having right now. So that is basically a KPI, a measuring tool uh, and through which you measure uh, how much is the temperature. So similarly, KPIs are the measuring things, measuring tool I would say and these are those that basically are used to measure the uh, achievement of the CSF, whether business will uh, be able to achieve the CSFs or not. And for that, uh, we need to have two sets of KPIs. One to look at the financial performance known as financial performance uh, indicators. And second, uh, we'll look at the non-financial performance known as non-financial performance indicators. It's always very important to strike a balance uh, between financial and non-financial. Uh, we cannot give complete priority to financial KPIs like percentage return on capital employed, like percentage profit margins. Uh, at the same time, it is equally very important to focus on non-financial performance indicators as well, like percentage customer complaints, uh, like percentage system downtime, uh, like uh, number of days it took to uh, uh, launch a product because uh, for the future business success or for a, for a business to be successful in future, it is really important to focus on non-financial performance indicators uh, and not just focus on financials because uh, if your non-financial performance is good, if you're performing good in terms of non-financial areas, definitely your future in terms of financial numbers will be very, very, very secured. So it's very important to remember that if you want to uh, perform uh, good in the long run, it is your non-financials that will ensure good financial numbers. Okay, so uh, for that, we have certain models through which we uh, ensure that we focus on both financial and non-financial performance and models like balance scorecard model, models like building block model are those that are used uh, uh, for assessment of the business performance uh, not giving focus total to the financial performance in fact equally considering non-financial areas so there are two different uh, nature of business i would say manufacturing and service uh, so for service businesses there is a special model by the name of building block model and this model is a one that entirely focuses on the business, non-financial and financial aspects. 
So, uh, just to give you a quick recap what building block model is all about. So, there are three blocks in this model starting with the first block uh, by the name of dimensions and the second block is uh, standards and the third block is rewards. So, starting with the first block known as dimensions, there are six areas to focus on uh, starting with financial performance, uh, competitiveness, quality, resource utilization, flexibility and innovation. So if you want to assess a business performance, a service business, uh, so you uh, can focus on these six areas. These six areas are important to focus on. You to focus on these six areas and you to focus on financial competitiveness, quality, resource, flexibility and innovation. Uh, so, how to measure these areas, whether we are good in financial performance uh, area, whether we are good in competitiveness, whether we are good in quality, resource utilization, flexibility, innovation. So, we need to have certain KPIs, key performance indicators that will actually help us to measure these areas. Like if I say we want to uh, check the performance of financial area, so there are financial ratios like return on capital employed, like percentage profit margins. And there are so many other financial indicators like uh, inventory, receivables and uh, payable days. Uh, you have gearing levels and everything. Uh, but when it comes to assessing the performance of uh, the business in terms of competitiveness, which means how well are we competing in the market? So we have indicators like percentage market share that indicates okay we are performing good uh, uh, and if our market share is growing or increasing so one can say yeah we are performing better in the market uh, there are other measures like uh, percentage conversion rate yeah very important how uh, many customers are actually buying from the company that is known as conversion rate or i can say percentage sales growth as well then comes the area of quality, which is very much closely connected with the customers, their preferences, uh, how happy they are with the business and also percentage uh, customer complaints, percentage reduction in complaints, number of refunds are basically those KPIs that one can use for measuring the quality. The other area to look here is resource utilization. Very important because service business is people oriented organization, I can say. Uh, so it is important that one of the resource is uh, the, the, the staff that has been working in the organization. So resource utilization is extremely important to measure uh, in terms of the, how well we are using our resources, how best are we using our resources. So we can say percentage occupancy rates uh, uh, plays a very important role plus number of students per teacher that uh, we have here, the ratio of students to teacher. So these are the things that will measure how well are we using our resources because in case of resource utilization, the focus is on how best are we using the resources, okay? Then we have flexibility, uh, guys, what flexibility is. So uh, how quickly do we respond to the market, right? How quickly uh, we respond to the market requirements, the market conditions, that is percentage on time delivery of the company, how quickly the company delivers uh, its products or not even product if it is a service business. So uh, percentage on time delivery in terms of for example, it's a railway business, so on-time arrivals or departures, things like that. So flexibility uh, basically uh, looks at the area, how quickly do we respond to the requirements uh, of the market. Then comes innovation, innovation in terms of service innovation, in terms of the processes that are used in service businesses, like use of technology, uh, like <coughs> the use of uh, better uh, technolog technological uh, equipments or the processes and not only that uh, coming up with new services as well. So measures like percentage uh, of income from new services, number of new services launched are those KPIs that will help you to measure 
uh, these areas uh, of innovation. Yes, it is tough. I uh, will say here for PM student at this level to come up with the KPIs uh, relating to respective areas, uh, but that's a very core skill required uh, at this level because this further then uh, takes you towards APM where much of the area relates to the development of the KPIs. So to come up with the KPIs, it is very important, my friends, that you uh, <coughs> do uh, represent KPI, as I always say, in form of percentage of something. Like uh, there are so many examples I can give you, like percentage customer refunds, like uh, <coughs> percentage system downtime, like percentage repeat customers. So you are representing the KPI in terms of percentage. Yes, I know when it comes to financial uh, KPIs, we represent those in terms of percentage a lot, like percentage rows, like percentage profit margin, percentage sales growth. But when it comes to NFPIs, non-financials, again, uh, the better option, the best option, the preferred option is that you represent that in terms of percentage. Similarly, we can also represent this in form of number of something as well, like number of repeat customers, like number of days it took to deliver a product, like number of days it takes to uh, manufacture a product. So you can even represent uh, uh, the KPIs, mainly the non-financial KPIs in terms of number of something as well. Uh, in the last case, in the last resort, I would say we also represent in terms of absolute amount, like amount spent on marketing expenditure or amount spent on training and development. So it is very important whenever you uh, represent the KPI, you have to represent in terms of percentage and number of something. Okay. Now, all the KPIs that you plan that you will be using in order to check these six areas. So for those KPIs, you need to set the targets. You need to set the standards uh, because if you have the targets, then obviously you will pursue to achieve those targets. So for all those KPIs like percentage customer refunds, number of repeat customers, they should be good targets to set and try to achieve the targets but it is very important as per building block model when you are setting targets like 85 percent will be the target for percentage customer retention now this is a target that you have set uh, for yourself like 85 percent of the customers are those we have to retain so when you are setting this target of 85 percent customer that we have to retain it is important that we should consider ownership in setting that target, which means the person concerned, the person responsible to achieve the target should take the ownership of that, should accept this target to be uh, achievable for them. So if it is achievable, then there is a very high chance that they'll consider uh, that and will take ownership of those. Third is the equity part which means whatever KPIs do you have or you have established, it should look to be fair. It should be fair, I would say. You can't make unfair standards. You can't make unfair targets easy for someone to achieve and difficult for others to achieve. So fairness is very important. Equity is very important uh, that we have to consider in this case. So when you're setting the targets, uh, those targets should be fair should uh, be it should be considered as achievable uh, and then only people will take ownership of those so the third block then connects uh, uh, with rewards and says that in order to achieve these targets it is important to motivate the people because as i've already said that uh, it's a service oriented it's a people oriented organization when i say service businesses so the behavioral factor is extremely important to consider you need to uh, ensure that people do respond to your targets and do get motivated to achieve those so it's very important that you set rewards for them so that they achieve the targets 
So building block model says that when you are setting the rewards for them uh, so that they achieve the targets, those rewards should be uh, clearly mentioned. The basis of rewarding them should be clearly mentioned. It is very important that uh, rewards uh, on, on the basis of which you will be giving the rewards on, 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 on that basis that you will be giving them should be clearly mentioned. They should know when they will be rewarded, when not they will be rewarded. So the basis of the reward should be very clearly mentioned. Secondly, uh, the rewards that you are setting for them should be a one that should motivate them. You know, it should not be said anything immaterial sort of something that they okay say I can buy this myself. I don't need uh, a cell phone from you because I'm already having a very high cell phone. I'm already using iPhone iPhone 15 Pro Max, and if you're offering me uh, iPhone 12, so I don't need that. So it should be something that should motivate the people as well third is the controllability aspect now what is controllability my friends uh, they should be rewarded for factors that come under their control okay if you uh, will uh, consider factors that are not under their control uh, and because those factors are not under their control like economic situation like inflationary impacts uh, like taxation impacts and then you say okay because of these things you are not able to achieve the profit targets or whatever targets you have given them so they would consider that to be very harsh for them as they'll say i can't control taxation i'm not part of the government tax is not my matter inflation is not under my control so why i am being assessed on these factors so uh, controllability is also important which building block model says so when you are setting rewards my friends you have to take care about three things that is clarity should be there uh, as to what are the things you will be rewarded for uh, on the basis you will be rewarded number two it should be motivating for them and third it should focus on controllable factors so this is building block model quick revision for you people uh, which is used for service industry i hope uh, this is clear to all of you as far as the revision is concerned now it's time to move towards our first question for today and uh, that is a section c question that i'll first start with so there are certain tips i need to share with you people as always for section c some new tips coming up uh, focusing mostly towards narrative questions now the practice areas the theory areas which says that answering narrative questions require a structured approach using clear paragraphs and headings where possible yes uh, it is very important for areas of financial and non-financial that we should be using more relevant appropriate headings and under the headings we have to write in form of paragraphs to make it easy and clear for the reader to understand secondly uh, <clears throat> it is very important to plan your answer when it comes to crqs right so i already mentioned uh, earlier as well that when you are dealing with any crq question it is important that you first read the requirement that is mentioned uh, and in that you have to figure out what are the verbs and what are the objects then you go to the scenario where you read the scenario you highlight important things the numbers the facts the figures the percentages that are given to you uh, <coughs> and then uh, after reading the entire scenario you will come back to the requirement area when you are starting to write so you have to look at the verbs and the objects that are given there the number of marks that are allotted to that requirement or you will look at the additional requirement i told you by the word and you will get to know okay these are two objects or there are three elements that i have to write about and then you can use the proper headings of the objects to draft your answer so it's important to plan your answer uh, what we're going to write in that case Third, uh, you have to write what you are required to write rather than what you wish to write. Yeah, that is uh, a bit strange, uh, but yeah, that's a fact. So you have to write what you are required to write 
are than what you wish to write. So these are the narrative uh, answer tips that I've shared in front of you people. And now it's time to move towards the CBE platform where we will be dealing with a question. Uh, I want all of you to also open your ACCA platforms if it is possible for you right now and come to the latest exam question which is September, December 23 question. So please kindly open your ACCA practice platforms and come to September, December uh, question area. So I'm going to that particular area uh, of PM practice area where I'll be opening question September, December. So uh, here we are with the question. It's September, December 23 attempt. Uh, I will give you two minutes so that you guys can even open your practice platforms. And if you're done, please kindly mention in the chat box. Okay, guys, uh, are you at this practice platform? And this question, please kindly confirm in the chat box. Right. It's good that you guys are ready. So if you are ready, then let's begin. Okay. So let's start with a CRQ question on ACC practice platform. It's a September, December 2023 attempt question. Uh, before I start reading the scenario, the first thing that I always do and I want you to do the same thing is to read the requirement. Uh, and while you're reading the requirement, they have to ensure two things. Number one <laughs> is that you have to uh find out the verbs and the objects there could be more than one verbs there can be more than one objects and how will you be able to segregate between them is by uh, reading it looking at the words like and that gives you the idea of, about extra requirements so that's the first task second important thing is that you have to uh look that whether that question is a knowledge based question a uh, simple bookish knowledge is what you have to write or it's an application based question where you have to link with the scenario where you have to use the case study uh, <coughs> and that is very important to figure it out as well uh, so these are the two things that i'll keep in my mind while reading the uh, requirement first so let's start for each of the six dimensions of building block model the six dimensions so we know six dimensions of building block model includes uh, financial performance competitiveness quality resource utilization flexibility and innovation uh, <coughs> identify one objective together with one corresponding performance indicator which could be used by l uh, company to measure its performance uh, the objectives and the measures should be specifically relevant to L company. Justify your choice of objective and measure for each dimension. Uh, and this is all for 15 marks. Now, the first task here is that I have to find out the requirements. Uh, I, I, I mean to say the verbs and the objects in this entire big requirement. Uh, that is what I need to focus on. So uh, what they want me to do, let's see. First of all, <coughs> they want me to identify. Uh, this is the first thing that I have to do. First action that I have to perform. Uh, I have to identify uh, one objective. So this is my object element, I can say. One objective and uh the related performance indicator of that as well okay the related performance indicator of that as well so i have to identify one objective and one uh, performance indicator okay uh that performance indicator that will actually measure the business performance okay so it doesn't mean that i have to measure the business performance right now it's not that it's it doesn't mean this it means that uh, I have to come up with a KPI. I have to come up with a KPI that the business can then use to measure their performance. So there is there are two separate things here. One, you have to measure the performance. One, you have to just tell them the KPIs that they will use to measure the business performance. So here the wordings, the English suggests that you have to come with come up with a KPI 
the measure that the business then will use to measure their performance okay okay so that is very clear and important now <clears throat> that objective that you will identify and that measure that you will identify should be related to L company. So no general objectives mentioned here, no general KPIs mentioned here because if you do that, you won't be able to score marks in that scenario. Okay. Now there's another verb that I can see that has a high weightage overall if I be, if I'll be honest here is justify. Now justify is uh, a very key verb and justify means that you have to prove you have to prove you have to give them the reason uh, for the selection of the objective okay why you why you selected this particular objective and uh, the selection of the kpi the measure as well so you have to justify your choice for the objective and measure so the justification needs to be given in relation to the objective and measure and that is your object element i would say okay now friends if i just sum up this so there are uh, basically two verbs i would say one identify uh, one identify what to identify uh, performance sorry uh, the objective and the measure first you to identify that okay second there is another verb justify justify that same perform the that same objective and the measure so two uh, verbs i would say uh, and two uh, objects but more or less it's the same thing that in short we have to come up with a uh, objective and we have to come up with a kpi or a performance measure that will actually uh, be used uh, by the business and you to justify that now all this is for 15 marks 15 marks so uh, marks are clear here now uh, I will do the planning part later on. <coughs> I just want to make a quick summary for you. If dealing with CRQs, the general uh, thing that we have to follow is we have to read the requirement first. This is what I've done. Uh, now I will come to the scenario. I'll read the scenario. We'll highlight important things. I know the scenario uh, is relating to a business, which is a service business uh, and so building block models being used here. So I'll read the scenario, then I'll come back to the requirement and will plan my answer, okay? Will plan my answer before I write it. So it's a very simple four-step approach that I'm going to follow. Four-step approach includes read the requirements, find verbs and objects, read the case study, the scenario, highlight important things. Third, uh, <coughs> plan the answer. I'll show you how to plan the answer. And fourth is write the answer, obviously. Okay, so it's a four-step approach that we'll be applying today. So I have gone through the requirement, first step done. Now moving towards the next step, uh, and let's highlight important things here. <clears throat> now, do remember one thing before I get into the scenario, the case study. Uh, I have to come up with objective uh, for each dimension, like financial objective one financial objective one objective for competitiveness one objective for quality one objective for resource utilization one objective for flexibility and one objective for innovation okay so to come up with six objectives <clears throat> so for that it is very important that i do understand the scenario well financial performance competitiveness so i have to just look very carefully that what in the scenario relates to financial performance what in the scenario relates to competitiveness what in the scenario relates to quality resource utilization uh, and uh, flexibility and innovation so any information that relates to financial i have to keep my eyes and mind open for that similarly for competitiveness and all other areas okay so let's start the reading part and let's highlight important things now, L Company was established 50 years ago <coughs> in the country of uh, <coughs> Showland as a premium airline. Okay, uh, it is very important. I, as I always say, uh, for financial non-financial questions, for financial non-financial questions, I always say that you <coughs> always highlight 
or understand the nature of the business, what what work they do perform, <clears throat> especially for financial and non-financial areas. So that is something which is very important because your answer uh, should be according to the situation and until and unless you do not understand the business, the nature of the business, then you cannot relate with the scenario. So I always say a very simple thing, a very simple uh, uh, tip I want to give you uh, without charging you anything here is that once you read the first two or one and a half line, you get to know the business uh, uh, type and the nature of the business. So quickly think of a similar business in your part of the world doing a similar work, right? So that makes things more relevant for you to understand. That makes things more easy for you to understand. So by looking here, uh, it's it's a business 50 years ago uh, and it it is it is providing an airline services. It's a plane, it's an airline company uh, and was working as a premium airline company. <laughs> okay, premium airline company. So I can say like Emirates in, in UAE, uh, providing premium airline services okay but let's move on what it says uh, following a global recession it relaunched itself as a low cost airline two years ago now uh, if i am talking about uh, emirates here so emirates is a premium airline company uh, and uh, what they did they came up with a new uh, product i would say by the name of fly dubai now, Fly Dubai basically is a low cost airline that they came up with uh, and that low cost has certain specific features, you know. Uh, so they came up with Fly Dubai, uh, which is uh, a low cost airline. Focusing on providing seats on flights at lowest possible uh, price. It currently has 35%. So I always say for any financial and non-financial questions, any kind of percentages given to you, any kind of numbers given to you, you sh should highlight those uh, and any important facts or changes uh, that are mentioned, uh, new decisions taken that are mentioned that you should highlight, okay? So <coughs> you can see here, it currently has 35% of the share uh, in 35% of the uh, low cost airline market in 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 Sherland. Uh, its largest competitor has 40% market. Okay, 40% market. So <coughs> that's clear. Uh, so we are behind the market, obviously here. Now, <coughs> the company's low cost approach includes. So we just need to now understand the, what their low cost approach is actually. Okay, so their low cost approach includes number one, leasing planes with seats placed close together in order to fit more seats oh, that, that's very much true you know you you travel uh, with fly dubai you you'll see seats are you know uh, so closely placed that you cannot open you cannot even sit properly if you're a fat guy like me i don't know whether i'm fat or not but it's, it's difficult for you to sit there okay the engine in these planes uses a cheaper grade of fuel uh, which is more polluting to the environment obviously uh, because you are leasing planes uh, that 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 can run using a cheaper fuel uh, that is cost saving actually you know cheaper fuel means cost saving so low cost provider uh, simply is a business model that you now you need to understand what low cost provider is low cost provider uh, is a business model where you have to uh, keep your cost at a lower side okay and your margins are not that much high if your margins are not that much high so you need to uh, keep your costs low and you uh, try to increase your uh, revenues you try to increase your revenues so that your margin doesn't get shrinked more and you keep your cost low so that's suitable for them uh, i'm not very sure about the pollution they are creating in the environment but uh, considering their model of low cost provider, it suits them. Second, permitting only one piece of hand luggage per customer. Okay, that is what we, we have seen. It's allowed. Any additional bag have to be placed in the plane's luggage hold area, which is never full at a cost of 
per item. So this is what they charge for any additional item they charge uh, the customer but the only thing that is allowed uh, to carry is one hand luggage. On average customers pay for 0.7 luggage hold bags per person okay compared to industry average of low cost airline of 0.92 which means our customers are not using uh, 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 the additional bag service uh, and that is where I can earn revenue but they are not using that as such okay compared to industry. Now next is uh, using ground boarding uh, which uses buses often left with their engines running for some time okay yeah we know we, we have used planes so uh, when you land uh, or when you are entering into the plane so uh, you are uh, basically they, they 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 do what they use buses for that <clears throat> so uh, to transport passengers between airport terminal building and the plane this is cheaper now again it's a cost saving technique that they are using okay they are not using uh, those passenger loading uh, bridges we know what what those are you know a good bridge cubicle sort of a thing uh, where you go and you're getting into a plane where people take a lot of selfies you yeah, are going to this place and something like that anyways so uh, they are not using that so it says to transport passengers between airport terminal building and the plane this is cheaper than using passenger loading bridges which are far more environmental friendly okay because uh, in case of those transport buses you have to keep those uh, what I can say on and that creates carbon emission next requiring customers to pay a fee of dollar 30 uh, each if they want to choose a pre-allocated seats that's very much obvious and you have seen uh, in your online bookings 25 of the 25 percent of the customers choose this option uh, whereas the industry average is 32 again we are behind uh, in in case of this pre uh, allocated seats availability number five offering only online check-ins for flights to passengers free of charge if you check in online right in person check-in incurs a fee for the passenger okay so this is a fee related thing uh, for the passenger but the fee only partially covers the cost of check-in for the company now this is bad now this is affecting you know this is this is something uh, uh, that that is creating a cost for them it also leads to longer queues for those customers who just need to drop their bags off at the same customer service desk okay <laughs> uh, because of the, the online check-in that they have done right this has led to complaints by customers who prefer the automated machines now this is very much common in emirates you know if you go to dubai if you have been here to dubai uh, so you will see that there are automated machines now operated there uh, you you don't need any personnel there you just put the bag they tell you the load they they give you the boarding pass uh, and uh, they give you the stickers uh, that you have to attach to the bag wow it's all self-based now offered by competitors for both check-in and bag drop offs okay uh, so this is what uh, they are not doing as such because competitors are into these things great improving cleanliness of planes a reason improving cleanliness of planes so this this is uh now it says okay this approach includes improving cleanliness of planes uh, and this is something they have done because a reason for past customer complaints while also attempting to reduce the minimum uh, ground time ground turnaround time uh, by using cabin crew to clean planes okay so this is what they have done uh, to improve the cleanliness of the plane uh, and also to reduce the minimum ground turnaround time as well okay uh, so that uh, the the cabin crew will clean the plane so it will take less time uh, for a plane to again uh, when the plane 
uh, uh, arrives to the airport and from that to the departure, it could take less time. Average turnaround time in the industry is 50 minutes per flight. Okay. Make sure that prices are equal. Anything inf any information related to prices is very important okay, to highlight as well uh, in questions of financial, non-financial. Make sure that prices are equal to or less than those of competitors so that flight occupancy rate is high 88 uh, uh, percent at the company in the last year okay so it's a low cost provider as i've already mentioned that their margins are not that much high so they want high occupancy of the aircraft they prefer to drop the uh, uh, to drop the airfare so that maximum people uh, gets to their plane uh, and they don't uh, 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 fly planes that are partially empty okay staffing issues have led to 220 flight uh, cancellations in the last year that's massively high massively high 220 cal uh, cancellation because of staffing issues okay uh, which has led to huge volume of complaints uh, and the company uh, having to pay compensation to customers totaling to 1.2 million the last year that's bad there is a staff issue for sure uh the some the the company cf ceo is hoping to start cross training uh staff so that they can work both on the planes and at the in the airport okay so this is uh cross training staff this is good one uh, a good initiative i would say all customers who have traveled on l air uh, l companies uh, flights are asked to complete a questionnaire asking key questions about comfort cleanliness and delays and then this is how they actually collect the complaints so i've i'm sure this is clear to all of you it's a good scenario good information given here uh, because uh, for question like these uh, it is important that we do use lot of info given to us in the scenario otherwise it gets difficult for us to handle the case so uh, I think this is clear to you guys uh, as far as the scenario and the reading of the scenario is concerned I hope this is all well clear uh, so guys two steps have been performed one step was to read the requirement find verbs and objects the second step uh, is a one where you have to read the scenario. I've done that as well. Uh, and now the last two steps are to be performed. And those includes number one. Uh, the third step actually is the planning part. Uh, to when you plan the answer before you start and then you write the answer. So before I start with the planning part uh, and start writing the answer and go into the in-depth of the scenario, uh, we'll take a short break here uh, and after the break of five to seven minutes and after the break we will continue with the solution uh, in a detailed way so now it's a very important uh, <clears throat> area that we are covering that is the drafting part so be attentive do listen to me carefully because i'll be opening lot of doors for you in order to handle this sort of a question okay so <clears throat> now step three is the planning part that i was talking about so when you uh, plan the answer <clears throat> there are three things to consider in that planning part <clears throat> number one look at the number of verbs that you have already highlighted number two the number of objects Number three, the marks that are uh, given there. <clears throat> and number four, the planning in terms of headings to be used. Okay. So if you see here, they have asked us to come up with an objective, the KPI, the measure, and the justification. Okay. So you have to identify the objective, the measure, and its justification so three things actually objective its major and uh, the justification 
marks are 15. So a simple thing to start with, just to give you the idea as far as the planning is concerned, 15 divided by 6 if you do. Okay. So what answer do we get? Oh man, mathematics, 15 divided by 6, 6 dimensions, right? 2.5, which means approximately you have to write for 2.5 marks per dimension. Financial performance 2.5, comparative risk 2.5 and the remaining ones. Understood? In that 2.5, the best thing is that in that 2.5, you have to tell about the objective, the performance indicator, and the justification. Okay. So, this means that for that 2.5, there are three things to be performed. You have to perform three things. And what are those three things? The objective, the performance indicator, and the justification, which further makes things easier to manage which further makes things easier to do why because i know <coughs> the weightage of the objective may be 0.5 the kpi 0.5 the justification 1.5 justification will always have more marks okay so like this if you split the marks in your mind it makes your life easier psychologically you are very clear okay this is what i have to achieve that's it so one thing is for sure that grabbing 2.5 marks for each dimension in such a way is not at all difficult okay understood then <clears throat> after the marks and splitting the marks according to verbs and objects, uh, the headings to decide. Luckily, in this question, the headings are clearly given to me. That for financial performance, three headings. For comp competition, three headings. Quality, three headings. Innovation, three headings. Flexibility, three headings. Resource length, three headings. So, normally we do plan this as well. Okay, there are six dimensions under each dimension three headings so this is also part of the planning which in this case has have already been done that we don't have to do so this clearly shows that four things are important when you plan the answer step number three one you look at the number of verbs that you have highlighted the number of objects that you have highlighted the, the marks that are available so that we can decide the split of the marks and the headings that we have to use to draft the answer. That's the planning part. That's the planning thing that you have to do. Step number three and step number four is write the answer. So I hope this is clear to you guys in terms of drafting uh, the four step approach. Now step four is to write. So we'll start writing here and we are starting first with the financial performance here and then we'll move towards competitiveness uh, competitiveness and uh, like this we'll move further ahead planning part done it's about to write now financial performance what objective is the key question is people need to differentiate between a performance indicator and an objective that is what the examiner feedback was objective is what something that you want to achieve is an objective what do you think yes or no whatever you want to achieve is your objective come on guys yes what do you think if anything you want to achieve is your objective so that objective or a plan to achieve something will only come when you want to cover some problem when you want to cover some weakness now i'll make it easy listen there could be so many objectives so many objectives but 
because I have to restrict myself to the scenario, I have to come up with an objective that should be according to this airline business. That's the first thing. <coughs> Secondly, if I come up with objectives for an inline business, again, I'll be very much generic because there are so many different airline companies having similar objectives, having similar objectives. So again, that can create a problem that I'll be generic again in setting the objectives. So I'm facing two problems. I don't want to come up with general objectives. Neither I want to come up with the objectives that are general for an airline business. Are you all getting the point? This means I need to come up with those objectives that solely pertains to the scenario. That specifically pertains to the scenario. Listen to me. This is a very important technique I'm discussing with you people for free. Okay. So very specific problems sorry i beg your pardon objectives relating to the scenario now what is the best way to do it i'll tell you the scenario information it's it's the information is too much in that information the best thing is highlight the problems the business is facing right now the first way Highlight the problems the business is facing right now. If you highlight the problems the business is facing right now, to overcome that problem, to overcome the issue, to resolve that problem, you need to set up what? An objective. My objective is this so that I can resolve this issue. My objective is this, I can resolve this issue. If I am getting weaker, I'm not eating things. So my objective is to eat more. Okay. If the problem is that uh, the connections, internet connections are weaker. So the objective should be to improve the internet connections. See. If there is huge traffic on roads. So the objective is to increase the roads. See. So. If you highlight the problems, if you figure out the problems to overcome that problem, to overcome that problem, the opposite of the problem is the solution and that will be your object. So like this, you will avoid two different possibilities. Neither you will come up with general objectives, neither you will come up with objectives that are general to airline business. And this is the best way to handle this. Are you guys with me? Did you understood this? I'm sure you are getting what I'm trying to say. Now, problems of the scenario that are related to financial performance, that are related to competitiveness, that are related to quality, that are related to flexibility, that are related to resource utilization, that are related to innovation so we have to think from that perspective understood we have to think from that perspective so let's look here <coughs> okay there will be no one right answer first of all because it's a scenario it's a service business any objective that i make will be correct and any objective that you come up to having the right approach is also correct. There is no one right answer in this area. Okay. Yeah, the thought process should be correct in the right direction. So, <clears throat> financial performance. Now, because it's a low cost airline company, we know the nature of the business that their profit margins will be very tight. So for a business like this, they will be focusing on two things. One, the reduction of the cost that will improve their financial performance or the increase of the revenue that will improve their financial performance. Wow. 
the reduction of the cost that will improve their financial performance or increase of the revenue that will improve their financial performance. These are the two areas for a low cost provider because their profit margins are tight either to reduce the cost, either to increase the revenue. Listen, let's look here in the scenario whether there are problems of revenue that they are suffering right now, the problems of cost that they are suffering right now. Let's have a look. If I go <coughs> towards these areas, <coughs> I can see additional bags. Additional bags. This is a revenue generating area. If you say L company 0.7 pay customers pay for 0.7 luggage hold bags per person compared to industry of 0.92. We are behind the industry in that case, which means our revenue from additional baggage is not according to the industry this is a problem in case of revenue wow so easy so if this is a problem what should be the objective can you guys come up with the objective if this is the problem the problem is less revenue in case of additional baggage so what should be the objective the objective should be to increase additional revenue from additional baggage that's it increase revenue from additional uh, sorry increase additional revenue from extra luggage so simple no issue at all this is the right objective if you write this objective you will get the marks for the objective okay let's brainstorm Let's prepare ourselves for different scenarios. That's the work Rizwan Mania does. I give you the thought process. And if I give you the thought process, your exam scenario will not be the same as the one you are looking at. It will be a different scenario. So if you have the right thought process, your mind will work in the right direction. That is what my objective is. To prepare students with the right thought process. Not to rectify things, okay? I can see another problem of revenue <coughs> where they pay $30 for the uh, re pre allocated seat. Pre allocated seat. So, 25 of the customers choose this option compared to industry of 32. I'm again behind. I am again behind. I am again behind. Because industry is what the benchmark is for me. If in industry people are taking these services from other airline companies, why not me? What's bad in me? What problem is inside me? Because I am comparing myself with the industry competitors. So, I have to be at the par. So, one more area, I can see the issue of revenue. So, my objective could be increase the additional revenue. Increase the additional revenue from pre-located seats. Done? Objective? So, this objective relates to the revenue side which improves the financial performance. Either of the two, I can select one. Cost side, I can see issues of cost here. I can see issues of cost here. Like you can say that there is issue in terms of uh, the compensations paid. This is a cost. I can see issues in terms of uh, cost coverage, like you can say uh, the, 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 the turnaround time, this can, if, you're, if your plane is more there, more cost, okay? 
you can see cost also from the perspective uh, of yeah, flight cancellation has been covered. So, compensation is there. So, the cost side is also what you can. So, I hope you are clear about it. So, the revenue sides or the cost side, one objective you are done. So, either you select the one that I mentioned earlier or this one, hand luggage or you select this one both are correct and i can write here the objective so i'll choose here uh, to increase the additional revenue from the uh, sales of pre allocated seats now, I would want to answer here certain confusions. Noman, please listen to me very carefully. I am comparing this with the industry average. If I am comparing with the industry average, so this means if people are willing to pay to my competitors, then why not me? You are not listening to me. Focus what I am saying here. The problem is if they are willing to pay to someone else, why not me? So it's not that people don't want to go with pre locates. They are doing that. That's why we are comparing with industry average. So keep yourself confined to industry average. Okay. This is what we are saying again. I hope this will resolve issue of Noman and some other student as well uh, raise the same question that people will don't bring extra luggage. I am not saying that should bring extra luggage. If they are paying to our competitors, then why not we? This is what we are talking about. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so done. Clear. That's it. Now, a KPI to measure this. A KPI to measure this. Now, what KPI does? KPI okay. will, will check whether we are achieving this objective or not okay so what measure you will select what thermometer should be here so i'll say percentage increase in revenue from pre allocated seats that's it so easy so easy approximately uh, maybe I can say I've, I've, I've just secured one mark from, from 2.5. Now comes the main part and that is justification. Justification. Why you opted for this objective? That's the question. Why? If I ask, if I ask you why you opted for this objective of increase in additional revenue, why? What answer will come to your mind? Why we opted for this objective? Why we made this objective? Yes, please. Can you quickly give me the idea? So the answer is, we went for this objective because, it's very simple, because we were behind the industry in this area we were losing the revenue in this area we can increase our revenue in this area because we are a low cost provider and for a low cost provider these additional revenues are good these additional revenues are good so what i can say is for a low cost provider these additional revenues will improve financial performance will improve financial performance 
performance the company is behind the industry so there is there is the chance to improve in this area are we clear everyone okay is that clear all of you very good very easy <clears throat> done 2.5 marks done next competition okay what problem do we see here that pertains to competition in the scenario man it's the scenario that will tell you everything why don't you guys understand since 16 years i'm saying this on different platforms that it's the scenario 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 that will help you so for competitiveness what good indicator that comes to your mind is market share do we have any information here yes see you are given with market share and says the market share of the company is 35 percent compared to large competitor 40 percent it's a problem so what should be the objective now guys to handle this problem what should be the objective if you are behind the competitor what should be the objective the objective the objective should be to increase the market share okay and become market leader done no problem because they were because you can see that they relaunched themselves they were a premium airline 50 years they can become the market leader again but again from low cost perspective done now what indicator will you choose to check whether are we improving the market share or not So we can use a KPI like percentage, market share, percentage market share compared to industry or compared to competitors, industry average or competitors or prior years. So I can say here percentage market share compared to competitors i can even use percentage increase in the market share that is also very much valid i can use that okay percentage increase in the market share now why are we selecting this objective and the resulting kpi to measure it why are we selecting this why we are making this objective any quick uh, justification very simple the company is behind the competitor five percentage points yes you are behind the competitor right so focusing on market share wait please so Focusing 
on market share will increase the competitiveness and revenues. That's it. It is not at all difficult. It's not at all difficult. Understood? Simple. So far, how many marks? Five marks done. Out of 15, five marks done. How many marks do I need to pass in this particular part? Sir, you need eight marks. Five done. Five done. I need 7.5 actually. Five done. If I grab 2.5 marks from the next one, I am just pass in the question. I can move on to the next requirement. <laughs> just joking. Okay. Quality. Hello. Come on, guys. Be with me. Think. Think with me. If you think with me, you will get the idea. That's what, what I do. I give you the approach. I give you the mindset. I hate ratifications. The people who encourage by giving sample answers and say, okay, look at the sample answer. They are making people stupid. Sorry to say. They don't give you the mindset to think. So let's see. Uh, quality, customers and all. So I think uh, for A-line customers, quality <coughs> is very important. And the problem that I see here is the complaints that we are receiving and especially the complaints in relation to cleanliness of the planes. It's very important for an airline company to ensure this. See, don't come up with measures directly. Think of the problem first. So the problem that I see is cleanliness is what they have improved recently and they improved that because of the customer complaints in relation to cleanliness. So the objective will be to, to improve the cleanliness uh, resulting in improvement in customer satisfaction okay clear okay fine perfect a good objective now uh, what is the indicator to measure this I think uh, it's the complaints that triggered them to improve the cleanliness, right? So I can use this as an indicator like percentage reduction in customer complaints in relation to percentage reduction in complaints in relation to plain. cleanliness issues like dirty planes and not a uh, good I would say environment in the plane and all okay are we clear now what is the justification guys why why you opted for that the question is why why you opted for that objective because uh, there were there were so many complaints in relation to that because in the past there were complaints in relation to cleanliness and company did took measures like cabin crew uh, will clean the plane planes so uh, already the issue of clean 
लीनेस इज देयर कंपनी ऑल्सो टुक मेजर्स टू इंप्रूव by using cabin crews so focus on this area will improve customer satis faction Sheikh Abu Bakr I already mentioned earlier that there is no one right answer you can use complaints in relation to other areas as well okay but the core thing for building block model I always say the core thing is the core service and that's the plane traveling in the plane that is what is very important sometimes we feel that we can write this in other area that's that's normal actually but and sometimes yes you can write one point under two dimensions but it's on you how do you justify that wisely okay how you justify that wisely anyways now done with this one innovation hmm. any charm anything for innovation here yeah i can see long queues of customers coming here and there is a clear need of automated machines wow nice you guys have to think on your own <clears throat> automated machines so there is a massive need for that so why you need automated machines in order to reduce the long queues okay so what should be the objective more use of automated machines in order to reduce the long customer queues see how easy i i what what i feel is this is more easier this is more easier than the general objectives that you think <laughs> because for general as well you need to think then you need to think according to scenario this is a better 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 100 times better technique to grab complete marks don't you think that <coughs> for your general answer you at least need to think and relate with the scenario somehow this is something that is ensuring that it is 100% according to the scenario see the problem in the scenario to overcome that come up with an objective that's it this is what you want to do that's your objective simple and simple what is objective this is what anything that i want to do is objective okay so this is innovation this is innovation now why okay now performance indicator performance indicator for this so what kpi can you come up with this one to ensure that it is working well 
So the problem is the long queues, right? So the KPI would be, uh, I can say, percentage reduction, reduction in average queue time. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Percentage reduction in average queue time or percentage increase in check in time. Balkin, not check in time, check ins, I would say. Percentage increase in check ins. Yeah. How quickly people are uh, performing their check ins. Or percentage reduction in complaints in relation to long queues could be an indicator. See, there are two to three different indicators that you can come up with. It's not an issue. Don't be afraid to write. Whatever you write, make sure that has a good solid connection with your justification. That is acceptable for the examiner. Duplications between dimensions will be. That's not an issue. You justify the way you want to take that point. Right? Okay. Now, justification. Why are we focusing on this objective in innovation? Because competitors are doing. So, competitors are using automated machines, okay, to reduce queues time. So, focusing on innovation in this area will improve queue time and reduce complaints for the company. Guys, don't say this is difficult. Please don't say this is difficult now. The way I have explained to you here, and that's my pure skill. Okay. These are easy pickings, man. Easy pickings. You're done with 10 marks. That's what APM is all about. That's how I make APM easy. That's one part of PM only here. This is the most weakest area of so many people, including the tutors. But for me, this is strength. Honestly speaking. And I hope you can easily understand today the way I'm explaining this. Are we clear about this, guys? Flexibility. Mars, this will take too much time only. If you are not used to this type of a question, if you have the idea what to do, how to write, so you can write quickly. And as per the exam time, you have 45 minutes for this entire question. So you can restrict yourself. Right now, I'm explaining you that that is why it's taking more time. Okay, but you know, there are, there are just six things to pick, six objectives to pick, that's it. If six objectives are clear in your mind from the scenario, then the rest is all easy. So for me, you can take less time solving this question. Now, what problems do we see here in relation to 
flexibility i can see a, a genuine problem here of staff issues resulting in flight cancellations so why flights are being cancelled why because see they have the question in the scenario they have answered the question themselves in the scenario we should have those eyes to grab it flights are being cancelled because of staffing issues okay so staffing issue is the problem that's why flights are being cancelled that's the problem so what they did <laughs> what they did they came up with the solution themselves and that is cross training staff wow so that they can work on planes and in the airport so they have the, mentioned the problem and they came up with a solution and the solution is cross trained staff see so what should be the objective now this is definitely part of flexibility that they are flexible enough to work in different places and if they are flexible enough to work in different places then they can perform multiple tasks and hence less cancellations will be done less staff absenteeism will create the problem understood so what should be the objective to to increase cross trainings for staff to ensure they perform multi task and hence reduce staff issues this is not difficult man this is not difficult okay so what KPI can you come up here with the key indicator? Sir, uh, very simple. Percentage increase in cross trained staff maybe or percentage increase in training hours maybe or percentage reduction in flight cancellation due to staffing issues maybe whatever you think or come up with should have a solid connection with your objective okay so i am discussing the multiple options here and not restricting to few options and the justification of that itself is given in the scenario and that is uh, to reduce the flights can solutions and hence the complaints arising from staff issues
also the already taken measure will have more importance and will bring better results because you know they they already took this measure so if we further over focus it or we further emphasize on this this will further bring better results and yes reduce the cancellations and staff absenteeism or and all those issues are we clear guys and this will also improve uh, staff satisfaction as well done yeah obviously compensation fees will reduce yeah we can mention that as well see a lot to write done i hope no problems i hope you understood the way to handle this okay now resource utilization means we should ensure the best use of resources best use of resources so the most important resource here is the planes itself and i can see the occupancy of the plane is the most important thing don't you think that especially for a business like l company who is a low cost provider for them profit margins are low for them it is very important that plane should not be partly empty they should ensure full flights full flights reduce the fee increase occupancy reduce the fee increase occupancy full flights so the object and i can see here they are not operating at full occupancy it's 88% in the last year so what objective will be to increase the average occupancy okay rate to increase occupancy as it's a low cost provider okay done what will be the indicator for this percentage increase in occupancy rate compared to last year percentage increase in the occupancy rate is fine okay justification as it's a low cost provider so it is important to ensure full flights to earn more as so many costs are fixed like petrol would be fixed because plane will go no matter if there are people in the plane or not staff etc okay
Understood? Done? Easy, 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 15 marks. And what technique was followed by me? The problems in the scenario became the reasons for my answer. And people don't know why they feel so worried about these areas. So I hope this technique finding the problems and overcoming the problems would be the objective and to measure it would be the performance measure. That's it. So I hope this is useful this technique this million dollar technique should help you to grab easy marks okay are we clear everyone right thank you very much i hope this is clear <clears throat> so uh, the four steps to solve crqs i mentioned that for narrative parts, especially the calculative parts, read the requirement, go to the case study, highlight important stuff, come back to the requirement, look at the verb objects and the marks and the headings and then write the answer. Done. Do give your feedbacks in the comment section, guys, if you like the technique, okay? And if you want me to solve more of these questions. Now, part B, discuss the issues that L Air faces with regard to management of its environmental costs. It's very important to figure out the verb. The verb is discuss. This is for five marks. Now, the ACCA examiner has mentioned that they can ask questions in relation to environmental management accounting in CRQs. Now they can ask questions in relation to environmental management accounting in CRQs. Okay. <clears throat> so if you see here, <clears throat> discuss is the verb. You have to discuss what, what, what is the element, what is the object. The object is issues problems that the company will face in relation to what management of its environmental cost so try to understand the requirement because you know oh man people are not understanding the question they do stupid stuff they come up with some other points Try to understand what is the question. The question is to discuss what issues, problems that company will face when they want to manage environmental cost. So here the focus should not be on identifying the environmental cost. <laughs> the focus should be on mentioning the issues that they will face to manage the environmental cost. Examiner report, examiner said that people just wrote about different types of environmental cost and they started giving suggestions how to improve it. Oh, English, the problem in this world of PM is English, English understanding. Sorry to say, we are not good at understanding English. Yes, for such an answer, which is for five marks, the object, that's why I say the importance of the object is massive. So verb objects, we are at step three, right? Step three. It's discuss is the verb, issue is the object.
if i want to plan i look at the marks and the headings to plan so it's just one object one object so one heading mainly that is issues so for my answer what i'll do i can start my answer by mentioning the environmental cost yeah i can start by mentioning the environ mental cost related to l company the airline company okay first because this is not what they have asked me to do so there are environmental costs that they are creating a lot like like leasing planes cheaper grade of fuel which is polluting the environment now what people have done in the exam they just copy pasted the points from scenario <laughs> everybody knows man have we gone dumb what extra ordinary thing we are doing by mentioning here oh this is polluting the environment or oh, dumb this is already given in the scenario <laughs> what extra have you done people just copy pasted that in the paper and they are like wow what what a paper what a paper we'll pass and three stupids when they get together outside the examination hall what you wrote oh environmental cost environmental cost yes same yes we we'll all pass <laughs> oh living in foolish paradise and then all end up not calling each other on the result day nobody is replying each other on the result day whatsapp off only single text on whatsapp <laughs> Only single tick. <laughs> oh man! Theory, theory, theory. Oh theory, oh theory, oh theory. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. So, guys, coming back to the point, there are there are so many environmental issues that they are creating. There's, there is one more. the passenger loading bridges see so there are environmental issues and all these result in carbon emission affecting the environment and is considered as external failure cost okay as external failure cost <clears throat> external failure cost now if as a company i want to manage environmental cost what issues will i face what issues will i face okay i'll change the paragraph to mention the issues the issues that i will face first is identification of environmental cost is the first issue then if you have identified it then managing the envira mental cost is another issue like for example like for example l company 
is a low cost provider listen low cost provider they want to save cost if they want to save cost so they cannot buy expensive or they cannot lease planes that will use expensive fuel high grade of fuel now if they use high grade of fuel for planes this would increase their cost and profits would go down because they are low cost company that's the issue so using high grade high grade fuel means that they will be compromising they will be compromising on profits understood this is the problem okay that's the problem <clears throat> okay uh yeah there is one option you can you can say that okay if they don't want to do it now if they don't take measures to reduce external failure cost so they will need to pay fines and penalties right nothing mentioned in case here yeah they they need to pay fine and penalties in relation to that okay understood also also the quantification of its environmental impact will be difficult now listen yes we are creating this pollution and all but if i want to manage this if i want to manage this so i would want to see that okay what impact this is having on the business if i want to assess the impact if i want to assess the impact i cannot assess the impact because maybe my goodwill is being compromised maybe customers because of the reputation are not coming to me are you getting the point so maybe lost revenues due to bad reputation will be there in case of l company now that's a problem that's a problem so it it will be difficult to uh, actually quantify it because people are not coming to you are you getting the point so these are the problems issues of managing environmental cost right 
we cannot properly quantify the impact people are not coming to us if i want to identification of the inverted cost itself is difficult if i want to manage it properly so i need to increase my own cost if i don't do so there will be an impact of the fines and penalties so these are the issues for them to manage environmental cost issues you have to mention don't write about the environmental consequences that they are doing or don't come up with suggestions how to improve that no the issues that the business will face in managing environmental cost is the object and according to examiner report people were off track okay understood so i hope this is clear to all of you a separate paragraph for this one a separate paragraph for this one you can even use two to three paragraphs that is not a problem but no bullets in paragraphs i hope your narrative side today would have improved a lot the crq technique would have improved a lot so far and i hope this is clear to all of you thank you very much for your uh, compliments in relation to teaching that's what i do that what that's what i know since 15 years 16 years i'm doing the same work so and this is the paper that i've taught a lot uh, when it comes to performance measurement so i hope uh, this will help you to improve okay guys are you happy so far do share your feedbacks in the comment section okay how useful and easy things became for you your feedbacks are important this is all non financial information so do mention things in the feedback section or the comment section so that we can further work on the things and make things more and more useful for you guys welcome back guys how are you welcome back so it's now time to focus on section a ot's uh yes section a ot's are isolated ot's so we should be good enough in dealing with those isolated ot's so that uh we have that knowledge and understanding how to deal those 15 ot's so there are certain tips and tricks that i want to share with you people in relation to this and first of all uh for section a ot's these are short questions the important thing is that you should read the requirement of that individual OT. Maybe they want you to come up with a true statement, maybe a false statement. It could be a fill in the blank question. Uh, uh, it could be a drag and drop, something like that. So you have to understand the requirement for exactly what they're asking you to do. Second, for fill in the blank questions, uh, rounding of instructions will play a very important role. I've seen lots and lots of students uh, leaking marks in this area because they're not sure about the rounding of instructions well and they do leak out too many marks in relation to this particular area. So you have to make sure that you are really good when it comes to rounding of instructions, round off to nearest thousands or millions round off to two decimal places so you must be aware of all those things then uh, when it comes to the theory based ot's uh, read all the statements uh, for theory based ot's all the statements are those that you should read that is very important again uh, because you know you do filter out the statements if you filter out the statements if you are very much clear that these uh, two or three statements can never be the answer so you are making your life really easy by coming only toward those points that are close to the answer so these are specific guidelines for section a and other than that i just want to add few more things here that there are 15 ot's that would be tested in your examination and uh, this comprises of 30 marks so remember easy marks are always there 
easy OTs are always there. You cannot expect all 15 OTs to be difficult. You have to keep this in your mind that not all 15 OTs will be difficult. In these, there would be seven, there would be five, there would be four that will be the easy ones. So <clears throat> just to give you a quick idea, as you want to pass in this area, you need to grab 16 marks, which means you need to ensure that eight OTs should be correct okay eight ot's you have to make sure that should be the right ones now to ensure that those eight are the correct ones there are four to five easy ot's that may be uh, uh, related to calculations or that may be related to theory that would take your less time uh, maybe one minute maybe 30 seconds maybe one and a half minute so if you filter out the easy ot's first because you have uh, the option to move on so if you see one easy ot theoretical one you can come up with the answer you can solve that and go on to the next one the next one you see it's a very difficult one it would take time you know as a as a student we we do get to understand very uh, quickly okay this is quickly manageable or not so if it is difficult move on to the next one like this what can you do you can quickly come to the ones that are easier ones and if you are able to solve four or five those easier ones so that will give you eight to ten marks uh, not only you will grab easy marks uh, you are close to just pass as well just three to four you need to ensure are correct and you will pass in section a plus those easy ones will save your time and will give you more time for the ones that are difficult ones so if i specifically tell you that one single ot you should solve on an average in 3.6 minutes right so one ot in 3.6 minutes again as i said the easy ones would take less time maybe a minute maybe one and a half minute maybe two minutes maybe two and a half minutes so even if you take two and a half minutes you still manage to time one minute and that one minute will help you to deal with the difficult ones so you can actually spare your time and complete the difficult one in that case so this is what will help you in your time management as well and also it will give you just pass marks at least in section a to ensure that you at least comfortably pass section a uh, uh, question right so this is a small uh, uh idea i wanted to give you in relation to smart paper solving technique it's now time to move towards certain questions to practically demonstrate this area so here we are at study hub uh, and we are solving questions in relation to a very key topic and that is transfer pricing so let's begin with this area in relation to transfer pricing which of the following statement is or are correct see this is the requirement i was talking about so you should highlight exactly what they are asking you to solve they are asking you to come up with the uh, correct statement in relation to transfer pricing so i will read each statement carefully and i have to decide that whether each statement is correct or not one by one so let's begin negotiated transfer prices will always <coughs> maximize uh, the total profit okay uh, negotiated transfer prices now what negotiated transfer price means the two parties are sitting together and they are having a negotiation in relation to that so will that result in maximization of the total profit is that true or false see two people are doing negotiation so it depends on the skills of the better negotiator a person who is a better negotiator uh, will uh, actually uh, come up to a transfer price that is favorable for that particular division now it could be a selling division it could be the buying division so obviously a better negotiator will uh, come up to a price that is better for that division and hence it will not achieve uh, <coughs> the maximization or the goal congruence so i would say that this first statement is not the correct statement okay 
Now, so this is wrong. Second one, market-based transfer price. Market-based transfer price will always encourage internal transfer. Uh, no, it, it again is not correct uh, because it depends uh, that it, it is not correct that market-based transfer price will always encourage internal transfer. No, uh, definitely it, it depends on the situation. So this is also wrong. Uh, and uh, I think uh, if, for example, you can uh, buy something, for example, if you are a buyer and the product is, is being sold at a market price, uh, so uh, it depends on the situation uh, uh, that what is the market price, what other options are available and things like that. So I think that's again not the right statement and this is wrong. So the answer here is neither one nor two uh, and the answer is C because both the statements are not correct. So I hope this is clear uh, because uh, in market-based transfer price, you know, uh, <coughs> it's because it is market-based, so there is no incentive as such to buy internally because this is market-based, okay? Anyways, <coughs> let's move on to the next one. Division R is currently manufacturing a product called J A and uh, is operating at full capacity okay now this is very important for transfer pricing uh, whether they are operating at full capacity or not so operating at full capacity s currently pays an external supplier 650 do highlight things in section a 650 uh oh yeah 650 for product kb okay but wishes division r to manufacture and supply product kb right so there is a product kb and uh, the s division buys that for 650 from outside cost detail for the two products are given below the same grade and the quantity of labor and material is used for each product. Okay. So, selling price, direct materials, direct labor, variable overheads, fixed, a portion fixed overheads. The question is asking us to work out the, what is the minimum transfer price? that division R would be prepared to accept for KB, minimum transfer price, okay. Now, first of all, if we say minimum transfer price, what is the minimum amount that division R would be prepared to accept? So guys, how will we come up to the answer? It's simple or not? Yeah, it's simple. Why? Because if you just recall the general rule of transfer pricing, which says that if you want to come up to the minimum transfer price, so you have to consider the seller's perspective seller division r is the seller will be the seller okay so for division r the minimum transfer price would be and the way i taught you the way i have covered that it's very simple that you can even apply a general rule here and that is variable cost plus loss of contribution or i can say marginal cost plus opportunity cost so through this we can quickly come up to the answer just wait for minimum we'll use the 
seller's perspective using general rule which is transfer price is equals to marginal cost plus opportunity cost now what is the marginal cost here for the seller for producing kb so if you see here the marginal cost for kb would be 120 for direct materials would be 230 for direct labor would be 80 for variable overheads so it's the marginal cost that we'll take here uh, the sum of this marginal cost will be 120 plus 230 plus 80 so it's 120 plus 230 plus 80 that's the marginal cost now what r will lose it's the contribution that r can earn by producing j and selling in the market so in that case what is the external selling price of j that is 700 How much is the cost to manufacture JA? It's simple. The variable cost, and that is same here 120 plus 230. So this makes 350 plus 80. So this makes 430. Okay, 430. I hope this is correct. So, what is the loss of contribution by not producing JA and not selling in the market? So, it's 270. Correct? So, 270 plus 430 will give you 700 to be the direct answer. 700. That is the external selling price. Right? So, 700 is the answer. As per the general rule, it's clear. Variable cost to produce KB plus loss of contribution by not selling JA. Seller perspective. As per general rule, answer is 700. It's very simple. Marginal cost of producing KB plus loss of contribution of, by not producing JA is the answer. So, I hope this is clear, guys. Yes. Let's move on. Next one. In what circumstances is a selling division seller is likely to consider opportunity cost? Now, in the previous question, we did cover the opportunity cost. The seller division R was uh, inclined in covering the opportunity cost when negotiating the market price. So, when will seller be inclined? To look at the uh, opportunity cost. So I just solved the previous question. Number one, an external market exists. Yes, in the previous question, there was an external market for product JA. So that's correct. And uh, you were considering the opportunity cost. Second, the division has no spare capacity. Yes, again, in the previous question, uh, it was working at full capacity if you remember so because you're working at full capacity and if you shift your current work to some other internal work you have to stop your current work because you don't have any spare capacity available it's your full capacity and that is the case where you have to consider the opportunity cost so i would say yes both statements are correct if there is an external market and the division has no spare capacity, I would say you need to consider the opportunity cost. We will consider the opportunity cost in that case. Are we clear, guys? So that's, I think, valid. No problem at all. Done. Clear. Next, division T is currently negotiating to buy a component from division V. So it's T who is negotiating to buy a component from V. Okay. The external market price of the component 
is 100. Okay, so let's highlight. Division T plans to use components to manufacture a product with a selling price of 200 and a variable cost other than the cost of component of 90. Okay. What is the maximum price? or amount division T will be prepared to pay division V for the component. Okay guys. So come on, take one to two minutes to decide the answer. Okay. So guys, now if their question is asking me to compute the maximum one, so, in case of maximum one, in case of maximum transfer price, we have to take the perspective of buyer. Okay. We will consider the perspective of buyer for maximum one. Okay. Now, how much the buyer will be ready to pay for this component? So, there is a very simple rule that I will tell you, lower of, lower of between market price, okay, and contribution excluding the cost of component. Now, because I am not sure about the capacity or the spare capacity or whatever is given, so <coughs> it is a simple rule. As a buyer, buyer can buy this for 100 in the market. Okay, the market price is 100. Option 1. Option 2. The final product, the final product that the buyer sells is for 200, excluding the other variable cost, because I am talking about contribution. Ex uh, deducting the other variable cost gives a contribution of 110. So, other than the cost of this component, the buyer earns 110. So, what should be the maximum one they will be willing to pay? The 100, the market price or the contribution that they earn, the contribution that they earn other than this cost of component. So, the lower of is market price. So, they will pay 100 as the market price, sorry, the transfer price, because this is less than the contribution that they earn other than this cost. Are you getting the point? So, it is a very simple rule, rower of market price and the contribution excluding the cost of company. Clear? So, the answer is 100 market price. Now, just to give you clarity and how powerful this technique is, just in case. For example, if market price would have been 150 and the contribution that you are earning other than this cost of component is 110. So, now in that case, would you want to pay 150 for this component, because if you pay 150 for this component, so from 110, if you deduct 150, you would end up in a loss of 40. You would end up in a loss of 40, and you would not want to do loss. 
so in that case the maximum lower of the maximum lower of in that case would have been 110 this would be the answer because you would would you would consider that okay this is what i am earning now and this is the max i can pay this is the maximum contribution i am earning other than this cost of component so this is what i can maximum pay getting the point so the lower of here would be 110 because you would never want to do a loss on a product yes guys are you with me say yes or no clear so in that case lower of would have been 110 that's why the rule is so good and easy lower off okay so done next which of the following which of the following are advantages advantages of a full cost plus pricing of a full cost plus transfer pricing policy advantages of full cost plus pricing trans, uh, full cost plus transfer pricing policy so let's look at the advantages you know what full cost plus transfer pricing policy is do you know that uh, yes total cost plus the profit element so what are the advantages here it covers all cost of the selling division yeah let's filter out easy smart paper solving technique says filter out the easy ones the correct ones and fine great this is correct one is for sure correct yes or no come on tell me yes now there are two approaches to two approaches for solving these narrative ones the theory ones the ideal approach is the ideal approach is that you should be very much clear about all the four statements that's the best one that is the recommended one and the other is smart one smart technique what is that that is not everywhere present but it is if you work smartly so let me tell you should i tell, tell you first the smart technique yeah then let's come to the other one and that is filtered out statements that's my way of solving smartly man come on if this is available why not now the first statement is 100 percent correct a person who cannot see and just hear me will say wow yeah cost full cost plus means cost will be covered of the selling division so statement a is correct now look at the options option a says one only option b says two only option c says one and two option d says three and four <laughs> which means now either the answer will be a or will be c will be a or will be c so if you look at a it says just statement one if you look at c it says statement one and two so don't need to read statement three and four no need to read statement three and four understood save your time play smartly if you're not sure about all the statements if you are not sure about all the statements you can play smartly like this or if you want to save your time you can play smartly like this and that's my smart paper solving technique liked it come on guys just give your input in the comment section yes or no so statement two the fixed cost of selling division become the variable cost of the buying division 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इज द स्टेटमेंट करेक्ट यस दिस इज करेक्ट बट इज दिस इज दिस एन एडवांटेज इज दिस एन एडवांटेज दिस इज नॉट एन एडवांटेज वाई बिकॉज फॉर बायर दिस विल बी अ वेरिएबल कॉस्ट now it's up to buyer if buyer wants to purchase this or not buyer says i don't want to purchase from you i don't want to purchase from you buyer says i'm not interested in purchasing from you because the cost of the buyer is variable a refusal from buyer to buy will not affect buyer but will hit seller because it includes the fixed cost of seller what seller will do nothing seller has to pay the rent nobody will pay rent for the seller seller will not be able to cover the rent so it's not advantage for the seller the statement is correct but it's not an advantage see this is what is what you have to understand it's not an advantage that's why i'm saying read the question read the question so despite statement being the correct one it's not the correct statement it's not the correct advantage because seller can refuse any time to buy because it's a variable cost for the seller It's a variable cost for the seller. If I manufacture chips, so in the price of my chips, I have included my fixed cost. And if you are the buyer, I am selling one chips packet for twenty bucks. Now, if you don't buy chips, or if you buy less chips, if you buy less chips. so it won't affect you but because my chips now will be sold in less numbers i cannot recover my fixed cost i cannot cover my rentals so it is bad for me not bad for the buyer okay because my fixed cost is my fixed cost but it becomes variable cost for you as a buyer okay so this is not the advantage and statement 2 is not advantage that's it answer is a don't need to go to 3 and 4 just in case if you are not sure you can come to the answer like this as well okay the last two statement just for your clarity it fixes a fair price if selling division has spare capacity uh no this is wrong last the markup discourages dysfunctional decision making uh no actually markup is the profit it doesn't discourages it encourages dysfunctional because as a seller i want to add more and more and more markup okay i want to add more and more markup so that's also wrong uh but it is easy to determine through smart paper solving technique is that clear everyone yes or no understood so the answer is a done great so did you understood the smart technique for narrative side yes or no guys what's your feedback okay now i am moving towards certain ots that pertains to the last september december attempt and which are part of the examiner report 
uh, as these were the one that were not well done by the students. Okay. So let's discuss these and see why these were considered as difficult ones. Uh, because these were the one where students were struggling or they struggled in the exam. So let's start with the solving of these one. Example one. Which two? See two. So your focus should be on two. Of the following statements concerning the assumptions of CVP analysis are true. Which two? Okay. So I need to select the two statements that are true assumptions of CVP. Let's start the first one. Contribution per unit is constant with respect to volume. Now, CVP analysis says your selling price per unit will be constant. Your variable cost per unit will be constant. Hence, your contribution per unit will be constant. True. Done. Okay. Correct. So, that's correct. One gone, one left out of four. Next. Total fixed cost will reduce as volume increases. No, total fixed cost will not reduce because the word is total. Total fixed cost will remain constant. Will remain constant. That's wrong. So not the answer. Next, to increase demand, the selling price per unit huh, must be reduced. I've already mentioned that selling price per unit to be constant. That's wrong. Selling price per unit to be constant okay next all cost all costs can be classified as either fixed or variable either fixed or variable so yes this is correct this is the correct assumption that it has to be classified either as fixed or variable so I think two statements are done. Uh, the last one is not the answer, but just to give you the idea, it is best suited as long-term planning tool. No, it is best suited as short-term planning tool. Short-term planning tool. Not long-term, it is short-term planning tool. Okay. Everyone, is this clear to all of you? Yes. Okay. C says reduce the price to increase the demand. As your price goes down, your demand starts to increase because at a lower price or if the price is going down, you are able to sell more number of units. Okay. So at point C says reduce the price per unit to increase the demand, increase the revenue. That's wrong because CVP assumes selling price per unit to be constant. Understood? Clear everyone? Done? Okay. Now, this is a very good question. And it, it, it is worth discussing this question. So, let's read. A very small, tiny question, but you need to come up with the answer. Lake Company has an operating gearing ratio of 160%. Now, what is operational gearing? Operational gearing uh, is something that we measure in order to check the fixed cost of the business. Fixed cost of the business. It calculates an operating gearing by dividing contribution by operating profit. So, the formula here is contribution divided by operating profit. Okay. How much will Lake Company's operating profit fall? Understand the question. How much will the company's operating profit fall? If by, if its sales volume reduces by 20% to the nearest whole percentage. It's the fill in the blank question. 
Now, we are given with operational gearing only. We don't have any numbers. And they want us to work out how much will the company's operating profit fall? Operating profit, okay? If its sales volume reduces by 20%. So, what needs to be done in this case? How can we come up to the answer? We don't have any numbers. So, any question like this where you don't have numbers, you can come up with your own numbers. The formula is contribution divided by operating profit and the answer is 160%. Is that right? So, can I, can I assume that contribution is 160 and operating profit is 100 and in this case, I will get answer of 160%? Yes or no? Come on guys, yes or no? Yes. <coughs> if I assume contribution to be 160 and operating profit to be 100, so answer will be 160%. This means if my contribution is 160 and my operating profit is 100, means my fixed cost will be 60. My fixed cost will be 60. Understood? My fixed cost will be 60. Now, if I have these numbers with me, if I have these numbers with me, can I make the adjustments to come up to the answer? I can. Now, what are they asking me to do? They are asking me that if sales volume reduces by 20%, if units go down by 20%, means revenue will go down by 20%, means Variable cost will go down by 20%. Hence, contribution will go down by 20%. If units go down by 20%, contribution will go down by 20%. Yes or no? Come on. Sure? Clear? Yeah? So, this means now the contribution would be 80% and that will be 128 would be 128. If units go down by 20%, contribution will go down 20%, will come to 128. But do you think fixed cost will change? That's the logic. That's the concept. That is the risk of high fixed cost. Fixed cost will not change and will be at 60. So if fixed cost will not change, a reduction in contribution will not result in a reduction in fixed cost, <coughs> the impact will be on operating profit. Your operating profit will go down. Your operating profit will go down. Guys, are we clear? Yes or no? So, Now, what do you think the operating profit, the operating profit of the business will fall by how much? 32%. Yes. The operating profit fall will be by 32%. It was 100, it came to 68. Okay, so there is a reduction of 32. 100 went to 68, reduction is by 32, which means by 32 percent, 
because you have to represent in terms of percentage. So, by 32 percent, it will go down. Are we clear? 100 minus 68 is 32. You can see 32 percent is the reduction in the operating profit. Done? Clear everyone? Yes or no? So, this is a good question. Question like this where you can come up with the numbers by yourself. Yeah, it's 32 divided by 100 gives you 32 percent. Okay, done, clear. Next one, a good one. <clears throat> now, let's see what uh, it has for us. The company manufactures cement. Okay, the company manufactures cement. It has decided to improve its image. With regard to environmental issues, okay, and is hoping that new activity based costing approach being introduced will help the company to better allocate the environmental costs it incurs. It's ABC versus EMA, not versus, it's ABC with EMA. Remember, ABC with the EMA. So, company wants to use ABC to reduce its environmental impacts or better allocate environmental cost. Which two, two of the following environmental cost would be better allocated? Two costs that are better allocated by using ABC. Okay. So, let's see. It's, it's, it's a tricky one. Normal losses arising, normal material losses arising from a wasteful manufacturing process. Do you think these normal material losses uh, are the one that are better allocated as a result of ABC? Are these treated as a separate cost? Are these specifically related to a separate specific activity? No. These are normal, normal material losses. You spread those losses over the cost of good units. It's normal, yeah. You spread that over the cost of good units. So, for that, I don't think ABC will work. Because we spread that over good units. Okay. So, no. For this, as it is not a separate activity, not a separate cost. So, the allocation as per ABC would not be useful. Salary cost of a supervisor at the company carbon dioxide immersion purification process. Now, is this an overhead? Yes. And this overhead relates to, an, to a specific activity, which is immersion purification process. So, this, this is a cost that will be better allocated using ABC as this relates to a specific activity. And it's a cost, salary cost relating to that. So, it's an overhead. So, yeah, <coughs> this is <coughs> one <coughs> that can be directly, sorry, better allocated. Next, off-site cost of training staff to follow relevant environmental safety procedures when making products. So, staff training is an overhead cost. And this could be uh, better allocated, uh, yeah, depending on the training that has been required, training required for making each product, more training hours, more cost to be charged. 
so depending on the training hours required specific to the products yes this will be better allocated the cost drivers these will have cost drivers okay the salary cost of supervisor will have a cost driver uh, based on carbon dioxide immersion c training cost would have a cost driver based on maybe training hours right next two done so this is not the answer increase hourly wages hourly wages pay to compensate staff for working with toxins gases these are hourly wages and these are the one uh, that will be directly attributable to the relevant products they are directly attributable to the relevant products uh, so uh, not useful here so the answer is b and c and this is a question that is a one that merged abc with ef right done so i hope this is clear and these were the one that created trouble for the students so that's it i hope this is clear to all of you and that's it when it comes to uh, our uh, webinar i hope yes abu bakar i hope the webinar helped you a lot guys please share your feedbacks in the comment section how the webinar helped you do tell me please what areas were the one where you learned a lot so that i can plan things better next time which areas you want me to focus on more that i can plan better next time so please share your feedbacks please in the comment section happy everyone these two days of webinar did the webinar helped you in terms of improving the skills of drafting section a section b revision of the topics yes guys can you express your feelings please happy okay uh, this is the number of our support team make sure you contact the support for the third day grand revision and the revision package if you want to be part of the general whatsapp groups you can contact me at this number 2436266 i'll share the group link or the support team can even provide you so guys overall what's your feedback was webinar useful yes or no i tried my best to cover section a section b section c all the areas here okay okay that's it guys see you then in the revision session now those who will be part of the revision camp the mock debriefs and all until then take care and uh, prepare yourself well self study student you can watch my previous attempt webinar available on wifi's youtube channel take maximum benefit from these webinars stay active in the general whatsapp group where i'll share all the materials with you and be with me till the end so that you can take maximum advantage thank you very much guys see you then take care